Thank you so much for tuning in. Our sign language interpreter tonight is Yula Nzale. So Anglican Church of Kenya has backed the Catholic Church in faulting the government over what it terms as too much talk and open-ended promises. ACK Archbishop Jackson Olesa Pitt demanded an immediate resolution to pressing issues affecting Kenyans ranging from the bumpy transition to SHIF, a punitive tax regime, an impractical university funding model, and increased cases of human rights violations. And as Safin Achieng Ouma now reports, a section of charge from Nyanza is threatening to declare a curse to all current individuals siphoning money from public coffers, terming the war against graft as one of the biggest failures of President William Ruto's administration. A few days after Catholic bishops in Kenya called out President William Ruto's administration for failing to honor its promises to Kenyans, <laughs> Anglican Church of Kenya has also chided the government over what it terms as too much talk and open-ended promises. Through a statement on Monday, SK Archbishop Jackson Olesa Pitt wanted the political class and those in government to come down from their high horses and listen to the concerns of Kenyans on pressing issues ranging from the bumpy transition from NHIF to SHIF, a university funding model they say isn't working, perennial delays in capitation for public schools, a punitive tax regime and unemployment. According to Olesa Pitt, this is not the time for the church to simply pray for miracles, but to demand transparency, greater accountability and concrete interventions on the issues that must be addressed urgently. Yes, now. A section of religious leaders from Nyanza region have also taken issue with those blasting the strong stance by the Catholic bishops against corruption. They should go slow on their attack on the Catholic bishops and the church leaders whenever we speak against corruption in this country. Honorable Shulei must go slow on her chest thumping and boisterous utterances against the people she considers anti-government. The leaders did not have kind words for any corrupt individual in the country. We are soon going to call for a national prayer to call all corrupt people into account. And for those who fail, we will courageously declare a curse upon them. The religious leaders are also unhappy about the state of insecurity in the country due to unexplained abductions, forced disappearances and unresolved murders. If only the amount of force that the government used to crush the youth uprising is anything to go by, then there is no excuse why the government and its intelligence department cannot apprehend the perpetrators of violence in our backyard. They claim the nation has slipped into political totalitarianism, blaming the formation of the broad-based government for silencing the alternative voice that could speak for Kenyans. The opposition, especially in this country today, they have been silenced. We only hear of lone voices which may not have impact, may not even prick the government to see things differently. Speaking during a church opening ceremony in Molo, Nakuru County, the moderator of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa, Reverend Dr. Thegu Mutahi, accused the political class of self-centeredness. When they want to impeach one of their own, in hardly two weeks, it is done. When the Catholic bishops gave their statement on one day, on the same day, 15 statements had been made against it. I wish they would use the same speed to respond to the issues affecting Kenyans. The religious leaders have demanded a complete overhaul of government policies they term impractical and ill-timed. We are not actually pleading. We, and we cannot and will never be cowed into silence. Safin Aching Oma, Citizen TV.
And away from that, the national treasury and county governments are at loggerheads over disbursement of funds to the devolved units. Now, governors are threatening a total shutdown in counties, claiming that treasury is yet to release funds to the counties. But treasury says there are no arrears owed to counties after 30.8 billion shillings was disbursed early Monday. CS Treasury John Bardi says county governors have failed to utilize billions of shillings lying at the Central Bank of Kenya. Stephen Leto reports on the latest clash between counties and the national government. Counties are on a crossfire with the National Treasury over funding to the devolved units that triggered an extraordinary meeting of the Council of Governors early Monday. While governors decry of lack of money, Treasury CS John Buddy says national government owes counties no single penny. We demand that the National Treasury immediately releases funds owed to counties, failure to which the county governments will have no option but to shut down operations completely. Today, as I speak, we have transferred all the money that should go to the counties up to the end of October. They have the money from October going backwards. Let them go and pay salaries. Let them go and pay contractors. Let them make this country liquid. There is money for them. According to governors, counties are suffocating in financial frustrations. We cannot be in... November, towards the end of November, moving to December, and are still talking of August and September release of funds. To kifika pale na kukwambe katika haya ma mazungumzo, itatubidi tu kufunga na kuwaomba wafanyikazi wetu wende nyumbani wakajitate kule mbele. We have not paid, in, we have not paid kamsa, we are not having drugs in the facilities. Well, in actual sense, it is the effort of all those other agencies uh, to frustrate counties that have has contributed to this. In documents seen by Citizen TV, a total of 158 billion shillings has been released to counties since July 2024 at the onset of the financial year. The latest disbursement being Monday morning when the Council of Governors was breathing fire in Westlands, Nairobi. We have transferred money late The country should know there is money with the counties up to the end of October. Let them come again and ask me for the month of November. In fact, even before they come, I will transfer the money for November. But saying that might, we have not transferred money, that is being mean to treasure, and that is distortion of facts. Treasury is accusing counties of low absorption of funds released to them. According to the report from the Central Bank of, from the Central Bank of Kenya, Nairobi City County, for instance, has 6.4 billion shillings lying idle at the CBK. Mombasa is yet to utilize 2.4 billion shillings, while Kisumu has 2.6 billion shillings awaiting Governor Professor Peter Nyangnyongo to spend. 3.9 billion shillings is awaiting expenditure from Kiambu County, while Nakuru has 2.8 billion shillings. Other COG Chair Ahmed Abdullahi Zwajia County also has 2.8 billion shillings idle at the CBK. Bomet has 2.2 billion shillings unutilized, while Kakamega County is sitting on 4.1 billion shillings at the Central Bank of Kenya. In total, all counties have had 109 billion shillings at CBK. On that Day 14 in the CRF account, there was 49.13 billion, which counties are yet to draw. And this 49, 32.8, you can't blame them for because 32.8 was just transferred the same day of Thursday 14. But there is 16 billion which has stayed in the CRF account for over a month. Governors have also faulted the control of budget for delay in approvals of expenditure. The delays by the control of budget to approve requisitions for the withdrawal of funds. This is unacceptable to an institution that's supposed to be facilitated. Counties also want the National Assembly to drop its hard stance in the ongoing mediation of Division of Revenue Bill. Stephen Leto, Citizen TV. Let's talk about education matters. Nine learning in public universities remained paralyzed on Monday as the lecturer strike entered its fourth week across the country. The dons have vowed to extend the industrial action despite assurances by both Treasury and Education Cabinet Secretary that the required funds needed for their salaries increment and recruitment of additional academic staff have already been committed. Setulale has more. 
students from the University of Nairobi who have endured a month now without learning owing to the lecturer strike joined demonstrations organized by their tutors. We have the right yes. to access education. Yes. Yes. Now we are giving them yes. 24 minutes. The procession kicked off at the UON Graduation Square Monday morning and headed straight to Nairobi CBD before making a stopover at Parliament buildings. The return to work formula is very clear. It is 10%, 7% and 4%. Totaling to 9.7 billion. None of the items have been implemented and we are very disappointed lot. So we are asking the government honor the return to work formula. The lecturers strike being demonstrated on the streets have a severe effect for thousands of learners who remain stranded at various public universities across the country. The protesting dons who also visited treasury building demanded CS John Mbadi to settle their arrears without further delay. We sent a letter to the Ministry of Education allowing or extending 4.3 billion to help in implementing the CBA for lecturers. We think it's a reasonable figure that we're urging the unions to accept, move back to class, then we can start renegotiating the new CBA. The demonstrators eventually ended their procession at the Ministry of Education's Jogo House. Here, the striking lecturers gave Education CS Julius Migos a 24-hour ultimatum to fully implement the return to work formula as contained in the 2021-2025 Collective Bargaining Agreement. Even as the industrial action by lecturers continues in public universities, students who have opted to stay in the learning institutions remain without a way forward with the academic calendar disrupted. Seth Olale, Citizen TV. Let's talk about graft matters now in the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has summoned Moy University Vice-Chancellor Isaac Hosgate to record a statement on the alleged loss of funds in multiple projects worth over 2 billion shillings. As part of ongoing investigations into reports of alleged massive corruption and theft of public funds at Moy University, the EACC wants the university vice chancellor, Professor Isaac Koske, to appear before it to respond to graft allegations involving fraudulent infrastructural projects worth two billion shillings. Detectives are investigating procurement irregularities in proposed construction of School of Public Health Dentistry and Nursing at a contract sum of 726 million with electrical installation at an additional 148 million and the proposed construction of Library Phase 2 at a contract sum of 1 billion shillings with an additional 169 million shillings for electrical works and an extra 35 million for ventilation and air conditioning works. The commission, through spokesperson Eric Ngumbi, has confirmed that the Moy University VC also faces accusations of attempting to interfere with the ongoing investigations by failing to submit crucial documents despite several reminders. The vice chancellor is summoned together with chief accountant at Moy University, Egla Samoy, head of procurement, Wilson Bett, and head of development, Unit. Moses Kip Kole. The latest development involving the summoning of Moy University Vice Chancellor Isaac Koske by the Ethics and Anti Ethics and Anti Corruption Commission comes as learning activities remain paralyzed at Moy University. Lecturers at the institution remain on strike, demanding to be paid their salary arrears. This despite threats of disciplinary action for continued absenteeism. In weeks of protracted conflict with staff and management, the Striking staff say they are owed over 10 billion shillings in salary and statutory deduction arrears, a claim denied by the administration who say they have paid salary up to end of September and that October pay will be released this week. Lillian Muli, Citizen TV. 
Now, the 2024 tax amendment proposals drew mixed reactions from Kenyans as public participation exercise began in different parts of the country. A section of Kenyans expressed reservations as to whether the whole exercise was a mere formality. And as Kamau Mwangi now reports, the chair of the Finance Committee in the National Assembly, Kuria Kimani, however, allayed fears that the committing to incorporating the views of Kenyans on this fresh bill will be done. In a fresh round to try and pump life into a section of tax proposals contained in the withdrawn 2024 finance bill, the National Assembly Committee on Finance is on the road again, collecting views on some of the tax proposals that seeks to raise 178 billion Kenya shillings to finance this year's budget. Kenyans in Bungoma and Isuelo counties on the first day of the public participation expressed varied reactions with a section feeling that about 99% of the proposals were okay, while others accused the government of giving with one hand and taking with the other. So, hapo kwa namba nne taxi ya aircraft, wata mkiweza kuongeza zaidi huko itakuwa ni sawa. Eh, na hii mambo ya mshara. Ayo mingine yote tunakubaliana na ayo. Nafikiri tisaini na tisa Misawa hiyo ingine ni kupiga msasa tu. Awa mamama wa, ulepata mchukua pesa kidogo. Inge senya mwekewa, ni mingi, kwa sababu microfinance, awetu kupani ya enda sara. Iyo, iyo, riba kuna mwekea, anashukumia, awa na miu. With memories of the June-July Gen Z protest still fresh, attendees of today's public participation exercise in both counties did not fail to remind the MPs of consequences of their defiant approval of the withdrawn finance bill 2024. <laughs> Lakini wakati itakuwa kifanya kazi, hatuta julishwa bili nafanya kazi. Hata tukisema tunaipinga itapita. Iyo ni obvious. Na kama itapita, kwa sababu naju itapita, ni ombi langu. Wacheni tunapolipa ushuru, wacheni tuone kazi tukifanyiwa. Same as the last finance bill, the National Assembly Finance Committee Chair and Molo MP Kuria Kimani has reassured Kenyans that their views on this bill will be incorporated, promising to do away with proposals that Kenyans do not want. So, we have to ask you about the bills that are coming from here, the bills that are Na vile ambavo sisi tuliweza kuiposesa katika bunge ni sheria mbili tofauti kwa sababu ya swala yote ambayo kabisa yalikuwa na wakera wa Kenya tuliweza kuyatoa katika ripoti yetu kama Mwangi Citizen TV and away from tax matters, Nairobi residents are fed up with the portal pandemic that has gripped this city and become a daily nightmare for many motorists. The prolonged neglect has led to mounting calls for urgent restoration. While the county government has assured residents that road rehabilitation efforts are underway, there are no clear timelines that have been provided, leaving many skeptical about when the promised improvements will materialize. Ben Kirui has more. A city of potholes is what the capital city has turned into. Many roads are at a breaking point with no signs of meaningful intervention from the government. For years, motorists have endured the bumpy rides as authorities seemingly turn a blind eye to the worsening situation. Take the Kasarani Mwiki Road, for instance. Known for its infamous traffic, the roads are pockmarked with potholes and waterlogged stretches only exacerbate the congestion, making it a daily ordeal for commuters. The situation gets worse as you venture into estate roads. 
In Pipeline Estate, for instance, residents have long voiced concerns about the appalling state of their roads that even test the most of patient drivers. But their pleas have fallen on deaf ears. The pothole riddles road become nearly impassable, especially during the rainy season, adding to the community's frustration. Gitanga Road, which leads to Kawangware, is yet another glaring example of neglect, a nightmare for motorists who must navigate its deteriorated surface daily. Uh. This neglect isn't isolated. It's part of a long list of Nairobi roads that highlight the government's failure to address a basic responsibility. Even the president recently acknowledged the dire state of the city's roads. <laughs> While the county government has assured residents of plans to restore and rehabilitate the roads, the lack of specific timelines has left many skeptical. With no concrete action in sight, this promises risk being dismissed as empty. Ben Kiroi, Citizen TV, Nairobi. All right, from the portals, the Monday report is taking a quick break live from the Kenyatta University Teaching, Referral and Research Hospital, where later on we'll have a conversation on lung cancer. Why is it that between 80 to 90 percent is diagnosed at a later stage, usually stage four? What is the problem? What are the causes? What are the symptoms? What nanny escaped death in Siokimao's Mudama Heights estate after building blocks from a neighboring construction site tore through their roof and struck them? As Ode Francis now reports, it has now emerged that the National Construction Authority, that is the NCA, had stopped the construction in April 15th this year, but the developer ignored the notice and continued with the construction. We apologize for that slight technical hitch. We'll get you the right story in just a bit. But for now, judicial officers have been urged to prioritize and expedite cases involving children in order to ensure their rights are protected. Chief Justice Martha Kome says Kenya has made strides in enhancing children's rights, but there is more to be done, especially in ensuring justice is served and in the shortest time possible. The CJ was speaking during the marking of 35 years of the Convention of the Rights of the Child by UNICEF. Emily Chabet has more. The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which sought to ensure that every child, regardless of their circumstances, would have access to education, health care, and a life free from violence and exploitation, was adopted 35 years ago. 34 years after Kenya signed the treaty, a number of children are still struggling to access these rights. Chief Justice Martha Kome says the justice system should be smooth and fast for children. We are prioritizing the training of judicial officers to handle cases involving children. They should do, do so with sensitivity and in adherence to child-friendly procedures. Furthermore, we have embraced alternative dispute resolution methods. CJ Kome says the enactment of the Children's Act 2022 is a monumental milestone that amplifies the voices of Kenyan children and addresses their evolving needs, adding that there is more to be done in ensuring children's rights are upheld. Last year, we handled 16,453 children matters, including 1,875 cases involving children in conflict with the law and 14,758 cases concerning children in contact with the law. 
the devolution conference of last year, which took stock of 10 years of devolution in Kenya, the children did present a, uh, a charter to the Council of Governors asking the government to meet some of its objective. So this is all about children's ask. The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child is an important agreement by countries who have promised to protect a child's rights. And as Kenya marks 34 years of this convention, concerted efforts have been called to ensure children are protected. Emily Chebete is on TV at the UN headquarters in Nairobi. Now the Safaricom Sambaza Furaha Caravan in partnership with Royal Media Services kicked off its central region tour on Monday after a successful tour of the Rift Valley region. The caravan was flagged off in Keno before making its way to Maragua, Mukuyu, Moranga Town, Kangema and concluded its tour of Moranga County in Kiriaini Town. The central region version of the Sambaza Furahana Safaricom caravan kicked off on a high note on Monday morning in Kernel, Moranga County. <laughs> Safaricom customers and royal media fans were treated to song, dance and various giveaways to officially kick off the Mount Kenya Sambaza Furahana Safaricom tour. <laughs> At the first stop in Maragua, fans were excited to meet their favorite Inoro TV presenters. Safaricom customers got a chance to walk away with various gifts, ranging from airtime, shopping, and phones. Nimepata unga, mafuta ya kukula, sukari, chumvi, ata bagi ya kubeba vitu. Na nimefulahia sana kuona nitasherekea pamoja na watu ya Safaricom. Na tofauti tofauti ya wakenya watajishindia kama vile Mambuzi, ziko alive, chicken, kuku, uh, na pia kuna a lot of air time to be given to our customers. The caravan snaked its way to Mukuyu Market and Moranga Town, <laughs> where more goodies awaited loyal Safaricom customers. <laughs> Kangema residents were not left behind. Christmas came early for the fans here, many of who walked away with various gifts. Some won t-shirts, others airtime, all in the name of being part of celebrations to mark 24 years of Safaricom and its service to the people. <laughs> The caravan will on Tuesday advance to Nyeri County with scheduled stops in Othaya, Mukurene, Karatina, Gatitu and Giakanja. Mary Mwoki, Citizen TV, Moranga County. Now here's a story I promised you earlier on. A three-year-old child and a nanny escaped death in Siukimao's Mudama Heights estate after building blocks from a neighboring construction site tore through their roof and struck them. As Ode Francis now reports, it has now emerged that the National Construction Authority, that is the NCA, had stopped the construction in April 15th this year, but the developer ignored the notice and continued with the construction. <laughs> The damage in the bathroom shows the magnitude of the crash. Boulder from an adjacent building tore through this apartment building. It was a close brush with death for the child and nanny who were in the bathroom. Incident that has left families in Mudama Heights states reeling in fear. Their homes, once considered safe heavens, are now compromised. This construction site, meant to symbolize progress, has become a source of pain and suffering for this neighborhood. Indications of non-compliance with safety regulations are evident from the scattered stones in the neighborhood. That stone was so big, it was so huge, and the impact it had in that bathroom only made me to cry out loud not because of what had happened. I was not crying because um, they were slightly injured. I was crying because God had rescued them from the jaws of death. Clothes are smeared with cement residue after laundry. 
We have to call these guys for Mjengo to ask them for permission. Msijenge hii pande ya kwetu leo because we are doing laundry. Wasimwage simiti. Secondly, unaweza amka asubuhi, upate bag of cements, helmet, ziko backyard, ziko huku mbele, tuko na watoto, mawe inaanguka anguka. Detectives from Lolongo Police Station together with officers from the National Construction Authority were at the site to examine and collect evidence of the residents complaints. As you can see the house number 12 ameshikanisha ukuta. Mm. Unaona? Hebu niambie mwenye hiyo nyumba anasikia aje. And the tenant who is living there now. Unaona walimgongea mtoto kichwa. Mm. Siwezi enda nitoke hapa niende kulipa rent mahali pengine. My husband sacrificed a lot. Akachukua mortgage tukanunua hii nyumba na haina deni. So you want me to go away. We gained access to verify the number of flows and the danger it posed to the residents. Danger signs are still glaring in this neighborhood with heavy building materials carelessly hanging from the construction site. We are waiting to hear what the county government says, uh, the Department of Planning and the engineers at the county. Uh, because we need to know whether this is what they approved. The National Construction Authority has confirmed that the developer had not met the required approvals for construction, highlighting that hoarding, fencing, netting, personal protective equipment and safety signs hitting at corruption from the county of Machakos. As families living in this area near this building live in perpetual fear of danger, Investigative lenses now focus on all the government rates for the second time in six months. The bank's new lending rate of 17.39% follows the CBK Monetary Policy Committee's decision to cut the base lending rate to 12%. The new rate, which takes effect from the 18th of November, applies to all new and existing Kenya shillings denominated credit facilities. CEO Dr. James Mwangi says this reduced rate will benefit both businesses and households by creating access to credit that he hopes will drive economic growth. With the lowering of interest rates, then uh, we'll see a reassignment of funding to the private sector, and we hope that will accelerate. Equity, second reduction of interest rates, again, to pass these benefits uh, to the customers and uh, encourage of take of loans and hope of ease the pain that customers and households are going through. So it's in our interest to work with the government to stimulate the economy. Now, the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection has launched an ambitious national job recruitment program aimed at connecting skilled and semi-skilled Kenyans with overseas employment opportunities. Labor and Social Protection Cabinet Secretary Dr. Alfred Wetua says that the initiative is set to begin on Wednesday in Machakos County and will roll out across at least 20 counties before the end of the year. Here's Jasmine Wamboy with the details. This initiative is part of the government's broader strategy to place at least 1 million Kenyans in overseas jobs annually. This is an effort to boost the country's foreign exchange earnings. The government says the program's first phase will place about 21,000 Kenyans in overseas jobs. The workers will be sourced from all regions across the country. The idea is that every county, we are dividing them equally so that every county gets equal numbers depending on the type of skills that are there. Job opportunities pan across countries like Jordan, the United Arab Emirates, Australia, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Germany. The jobs include roles such as housekeepers, car wash attendants, cleaners, drivers and other semi-skilled professions. The government says the salaries will range from a take-home of about 40,000 shillings to as high as 1 million shillings depending on the job and location. The interviews are free of charge but some workers may be required to pay processing fees. CS Mutua says the government is working with a lineup of financial institutions to provide credit facilities. For example, some countries say, get me somebody for this position, but just get them to me here. So that means you have to figure out how to get that person there. And uh, you can't put them on a border border, they have to fly. Asked about the safety of these workers, the CS had this to say. We have over 3 million Kenyans currently overseas. The challenges that you find affect less than 0.1% of Kenyans who are overseas. We cannot say Kenyans cannot travel overseas because we are So we also need to realize 
but akuna mali akuna shida the government is encouraging eligible citizens to show up for the interviews and scoring its commitment to tackling unemployment jasmine omboi citizen tv now, the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury, John Bardi, has called on government officials to reduce the pilferage of public resources to bring down Kenya's external debt. Bardi, who was speaking during the opening of the 52nd East African Revenue Authority Commissioner's General Meeting, also emphasized the need for countries to enhance domestic revenue mobilization, warning that the volatile geopolitical environment globally has left sub-Saharan countries exposed as development partners' priorities shift. Jimmy Bogo was at the opening of the two-day conference. It is estimated that over 2 billion shillings is lost to corruption every day in Kenya. An amount that the Cabinet Secretary for the National Treasury, John Mbadi, now says could be used to help the country move away from relying on external debt. Mbadi is now calling on government officials to reduce the pilferage of public resources to help reduce external debt, warning of tougher times ahead for sub-Saharan Africa countries that rely on financial support from Bretton Woods institutions, acknowledging a shift in their interest from the continent. If we are stealing two billion per day, assuming we reduce the theft, we don't want to stop it, we just say, okay, if you have been stealing a thousand, please steal only 500 shillings. If you have been stealing 100,000, steal 50,000. If there could be that, I don't know whether to call it conscious decision, but if there could be such a decision, ridiculous as it sounds, we would be saving a billion shillings per day, which would accumulate to 365 billion shillings. That is more than the external borrowing. On his part, Kenya Revenue Authority Commissioner General Humphrey Watanga has urged his counterparts in the region revenue authorities to enhance integration and use of technology in revenue collection strategies to reach the hard to tax sectors, acknowledging the struggles faced by most economies in the region owing to the informal nature of the region's economy. As Commissioners General, we relish these cost-effective ways of enhancing our capabilities in improving revenue mobilization. We must continue to provide technical support to budding revenue administrations until they too are able to stand on their own. Deliberations at the two-day forum are expected to focus on deploying compliance risk management tools to target high revenue areas while supporting informal sectors by leveraging technologies like blockchain and IoT, as well as how to better build collaboration with regional tax authorities to curb tax evasion and smuggling. Jimmy Bogo, Citizen TV, Nairobi. So old car tires end up in dump sites where they pose environmental challenges. But in Kibra, a young fashion designer is recycling old tires into impressive footwear, targeting both the local and international market. Edward Treyer visited George Otieno at his workshop and now tells us the inspiration behind Akala 21. At his workshop in Kibra, Jojo Tieno and his team have a deadline to meet a client's order. This is a color 21, a venture founded by George to recycle old car tires into attractive sandals. A color 21 was formulated in 2020 during the COVID period. Ideally, I started making shoes after finishing high school, but now I pursued a bachelor's degree in fashion design and marketing at Kenyatta University. Akala 21 simply means Akalas for the 21st century. Yeah, so Akala in Kenyan context is an issue that has been made out of a cycle tire. We're just wa wanting to, uh, to give it an update, a facelift uh, in terms of its utility, in terms of its aesthetic, uh, to, to be able to suit the 21st century clientele. Akala 21 fuses pure leather and the upcycled old car tires to make the final product. The leather is obtained from local tanneries and George has contracted casuals who peel the car tires to get the desired material. We've decided to use the side, the inside part of the tire where the tube rests. So that side is also as good and as durable as the outside part and it's also as present, it's very presentable actually. It usually starts from the inspiration part where you now now translating uh, your ideas into sketches, technical sketches. You decide on the materials you wish to use, do a prototype, a sample 
and then from this sample you share it with now your production team. So the production team is uh, uh, will now do the mass production or uh, specific uh, production processes. Upcycle tire, so far I get them from uh, different, the people who harvest them from the landfills and then they, they slice them and then they sell them. From the local industries you have, they slice them and then they sell them. From the local industries you have industries like Sagana which has, has really supported our journey, especially in the leather development. When the products are ready, George sells them online mostly particularly targeting fashion enthusiasts and environmentalists. So people who know what the world we're living in right now, the whole idea of climate change and environmental change, uh, they are primarily the people who mostly buy our products. You can always find or place an order um, to get our products at Akala21 on both Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. The price of our sandals range from between 3,000 Kenya shillings to 5,000 Kenya shillings at the entry level. Past that now we do uh, special made to measure orders which go all the way up to 25,000 depending on the level of customization and the complexity of the design. Akala 21 products have gained popularity due to their uniqueness and recently George was feted for his role in upcycling old car tires. The business has been growing progressively. Yeah, uh, we even got a chance to showcase our products at Ethiopia uh, just uh, a week ago uh, to which we even won an award as uh, under the upcycle footwear collection. We are the best yeah, in Africa. So it, 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 it generally shows that our product has been widely accepted and the people really love whatever we're doing. George currently makes up to 1,500 units per month, but his long-term plan is to start making shoes customized for a client's foot type and shape. There's a, a certain field within the footwear that we wish to venture into that is called podiatry. So but podiatry in uh, simple terms is just a field in science that deals with the study of uh, human feet. We want to also create shoes that are uh, that also address human health. Yeah, so as much as you're, you're wearing something stylish, something fashionable, but it can also help you with the kind of condition you have, whether you have arthritis, uh, you can get a shoe that can address that particular condition. Edward Chwea, Made in Kenya, Citizen TV. <laughs>
All right, so four teams have qualified for the semi-finals of the Shabiki.com sponsored Rashid Abdallah Super Cup, fifth edition in Kwale County. The semis that will be played on 30th November and 1st of December 2024 will see Denmark FC, Lesiam FC, Black Eagles and Dumna FC jostle for a chance to play in the final. The games will be played at Kombani Grounds on the second week of the quarterfinals. Black Eagles beat Azam United 4-2 while the Msambweni derby between Dumna FC and Fafada FC ended 2-0 in favor of Black Eagle. Organizers say that the tournament has nurtured talent in Kwale County while uplifting businesses as well. The finals that will be a big football event and music bonanza will be played in December. <laughs> tulisema tuwezi tena kufanya makosa ile tulifanya last edition kwa hiyo tumekuwa waangalifu katika kujitayarisha na hivi basi inaonekana safari yetu inaelekea kwenda kuchukua kikombe cha fifth edition ni tournament nzuri kwa sababu inasaidia jamii kwa masuala mengi ya kiuchumi masuala ya usalama na naona rashi na jitahidi kwa sababu hii ni inatusaidia pia kwa njia moja ama nyingine kwa sababu vijana wanakuwa engaged e, ilikuwa na hisia mseto e, kwa watu wote zaidi na uwanjani pia ukiangalia katika masala ya kibiashara unaweza ukasema kwamba e, watu wa kwale si watu tu wa hapa kombani lakini watu wote wa kwale wamenufaika kuna wale ambao tutapatia nafasi kuuza njugu kuuza labania kuuza maji ili mradi tu kila mmoja anakuja hapa kuweza kujitafutia riziki